In this video, I'll be exploring the life of the Carboniferous period, the fifth and second to last period of the Paleozoic era, the first era throughout which abundant large life forms existed, having seemingly gotten their start in the period immediately preceding the Paleozoic, the Ediacaran. Life continued to evolve and fill new niches during the Carboniferous, and on land we saw some rather large plants and creatures. We'll wander into the water and consider the fish before exploring the tetrapods, then we'll meet the plants and not tetrapod animals on land, then onto the reefs and some other marine life. This video is part of my larger mission to come to understand and relay the story of everything there is and its slash their history. If that interests you, check out the channel, particularly from the playlist perspective. If the playlists are too shallow for you now, check back in in a year, or 10, or 50. The jawless fish, or agnathans, had seen all their remaining armored versions die out in the late Devonian, and jawless fish would not see a recovery for the rest of history thus far, but some of their unarmored versions, including the eel-like conodont bears, lived on, leaving behind lineages by the end of the Carboniferous. The placoderms were no longer around when the Carboniferous began, having lost their last in the late Devonian. Amongst the Acanthodians, from which the cartilaginous chondrichthians had earlier emerged, the orders of Diplocanthiforms and Iscanacanthiforms are no longer around, while Climatiforms lasted into the early Carboniferous and no more, and only the Acanthodiforms survived through the whole Carboniferous and into the coming Permian period. The Rafin fish, or Actinopterygians, saw a continued radiation of Paleonisiforms, whose mouth opened like a trap door. This radiation would continue beyond the Carboniferous, while the first appearance and radiations of the modern Neopterygians, Haloste and Dominant Teleoste, not having begun yet. In apparent correspondence to this first Actinopterygian Paleonisiform radiation, there are numerous predatory shark-like fish arising in the Carboniferous. Lobefin fish are around, with their largest ever member so kind as to check in during this period, the apex predator Rhizidus. Some of their tetrapod cousins, having just started their story in the Devonian, now had their digits standardized at 5 per foot by the appearance of the earliest Carboniferous tetrapod, Pederpes, who seems to have had a six digit on its forelimbs. The later finds are five apiece per hand and foot. All known Carboniferous tetrapods live near the equator. Important Carboniferous tetrapods include the Temnospondyls, which are most often considered early batrachomorphs, which is the clade within which the smaller clade Lysamphibia, comprising all modern amphibians, would arise. But the first Lysamphibian is far off in the future. These early temnospondyls were generally short-limbed and are thought to have been living in or close to fresh waters. Carboniferous temnospondyls are represented by 40 families and 160 genera. Here is Capetus of the late Carboniferous, a fairly characteristic member of the temnospondyls, likely living out a crocodile-like lifestyle. The clade containing the amniotes, as well as all the creatures more closely related to the amniotes than to the lysamphibia, is that of Reptiliomorpha, which sees its earliest members appear in the Carboniferous as well. Among them, picking up in the late Carboniferous, are the microsaurs, small and some more terrestrially adapted and some strikingly aquatic, maintaining gills throughout their lifetime, the elongated and fairly aquatic nectridians with their shorter bodies and long tails also pick up in the Carboniferous. Then there were the weak-limbed anthracosaurs, most of which were water-living creatures, likely crocodile-like fish eaters, but some anthracosaurs were adapted to land. Amniotes themselves have their oldest known members come through in the late Carboniferous along the southern shores of your America, and they're rather small, modern lizard-sized creatures such as Hylonymus. And the division between synapsids and diapsids came to be in the late Carboniferous reptiliomorph radiation, with synapsids being the dominant type and the oldest appearances in the fossil record of the synapsids coming in the form of Archaeotheris and the more fragmentary remains of Echinerpeton. While lycopsids in the Devonian were all small, some Carboniferous lycopsids grew incredibly tall, such as the reaching up to 20 meters Lepidodendron and the lycopsid Sigillaria. 
They lived in swampy environments, and the giant ones died out as aridity took hold in the M. carboniferous, and lycopsids more broadly saw a partial replacement by ferns and seed ferns as drier climates came to pass. Large plants that aren't large these days was a more general theme of this period, and though small plants are thriving, these exceptional plants are what stand out in the Carboniferous. Giant horsetails grew alongside streams in densely packed thickets, with calamites reaching as high as 20 meters tall, but these too saw their demise in the end Carboniferous. And ferns, which see some tree-like members today, saw large members in the Carboniferous, such as the tree fern Saronius, growing to 10 meters. Seed plants, having seen their start in the late Devonian, took off in the Carboniferous, with the earliest known being pteridosperms, which flourished in Carboniferous. Conifers, the most diverse gymnosperm group, emerged in the late Carboniferous, while almost all the evidence of plant life in this period remains in moist environments and alongside there, and I should mention that Carboniferous swampy rainforest conditions were wildly vast in this period, there are also some signs of extensive dry upland vegetation flowering plants or angiosperms didn't yet exist. The Carboniferous saw very large half-meter long millipedes, as well as the monster-sized millipede-like creature Arthropleura, who reached almost 2.3 meters long and 18 inches across, and centipedes were significant predators in this period. Insects saw a major increase in the Carboniferous and were very diverse by the late Carboniferous, by the mid-carboniferous, functional wings are found in the fossil record. Once again, we have monster-sized creatures such as the 70-centimeter wingspan dragonfly Meganura. Spiders were around, and scorpions walked the ground as well. By the late carboniferous, all modern classes of fungi raised their hand at roll call. Rugosan corals were diverse in the Carboniferous, with members such as Caninia, Paleosmilia, and Zephrenthus. The tabulate corals continued through the Carboniferous as well, with such members as Michelinia and Syringopora, though the tabulates were in decline following the late Devonian Frasnian extinctions. Brachiopods recovered from their late Devonian debacle, and the Carboniferous saw significant experimentation in form. Crinoids were around as well, hitting their all-time peak in the early Carboniferous, and with the disparids already having fallen in significance earlier, clated crinoids are doing very well, though their explosion in diversity receded in the late Carboniferous. Trilobites limped into the Carboniferous at low diversity and remained there, with the lone order of Proetida remaining around. The Eurypterids were also less diverse than their former Silurian and Devonian flourishing. Amongst the cephalopods, which had previously seen the nautiloids and then joining alongside them and coming to dominate were the ammonoids. They both remained, and now we may have the first coleoids, arguably anyway, as the Carboniferous claims, like Gilletskia and Paleoconus, are as yet not definitive. With the Carboniferous behind us, the next period calling out for attention is the Permian, which I'll consider in the coming video. It will be the end of an era, with a story all too normal in life history, mass extinction, but of the big five, this would be the worst of them all.